Boys and girls, Tony DeMore from DeMore Engineering. We're going to continue on with these bench testing of the E-Series amps. Today we're going to do the E1000.1. All right, let's hook this up. Watch the other videos before this one, you know what I'm going to hook up first, right? Everybody knows. We're hooking up the ground wire first. Why are we hooking up the ground wire first? Because if you hook up the RCAs before you hook up the ground wire and the power wire has already been connected, then you will draw current through the RCA shield and wires and through your head unit or DSP, likely blowing the ground circuit in those or you can blow the clean D circuit on the front end of your amplifier. So ground first. After that, doesn't matter. You can hook up whatever you want next. Okay, so I've got my bass boost down. Phase control turn to zero. The gain almost all the way down. The crossover all the way up. So it's at its most open position. This is a low pass subwoofer amplifier. So opening the crossover all the way will allow it to play from 10 Hertz to 250 Hertz. Also the infrasonic filter is all the way down. So that's the windows open as much as it can be. Um, everything's connected. Turn on my amp dyno. The amp dyno is going to be the load bank. The audio precision is going to do all the measurements. And I'm going to run it through the same stuff that we did on the 750.1. Okay, so for the signal to noise or the uh, distortion test, we're going to do the half power. This is an E1001. I do not remember the 4 ohm rating on this. E1001, 4 ohms, 400 is what we call it. So I'm going to do my distortion testing at 200 watts. That's half power. And we're going to use 100 hertz. That's right in the middle of the bandwidth that we are able to play with this amplifier. So that's 23 watts. Hundred and was it 243 watts. And back down a little bit from there. Two nineteen, close enough. So it's a little bit over half power. This is a total harmonic distortion plus noise. So this is any, any noises plus all the harmonics, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth order, etc. So what that means is we're, we're putting 100 hertz into it. So we're measuring how much 200 hertz, 300 hertz, 400, anything that's not 100 hertz, noise, hiss, all those things, how much of that is coming out versus how much of it is just pure 100 hertz, that's what this number means. And the answer here is 0.36%. So 99.6% is the original signal. So on a subwoofer amplifier like this, that's a, that's a fair number. It's a typical class D number of the, I would say what are the, the better class Ds. Some class Ds don't have the same kind of uh, feedback mechanisms and, and uh, power supplies, and they have a, a much higher number than this all the time. So 0.39, all right, I'll set it to go. Let's do our next test. Next, we're going to do frequency response. So this is the curve from the last amp that we tested here, which was the 750.1. This one should have a very identical graph. Let's just go ahead and run it. I'm going to append it so that we can see it on top of this one just for fun. Shits and grins. Yeah, exact, pretty much exactly the same. 
So yes, ruler flat basically from 20 hertz all the way up to 200 and then our minus three dB would be our crossover uh, low pass setting, which is right there at 250, exactly what the uh, knob on that side of the amplifier says. And then over here is the infrasonic filter causing this roll off on the low end. And it's set to 10 hertz um, on the knob, but if I zoom in and look for that minus three, it looks like it's closer to, let's keep zooming, keep zooming, it's about 12 hertz. Okay, so that looks great. And let's do signal to noise. So on our signal to noise test, we're gonna measure the loudest sound the amplifier can make versus how quiet can it be. This is an important measurement. A good number is, you know, probably somewhere over 90 because most head units, source units are gonna have at least 90 or so. If your amplifier is worse than that, it's gonna be adding noise to the system. Um, so let's look for that. So we need to turn it up some more. More input level, we're not all the way up yet. Remember this test is how loud can it be versus how quiet can it be? No clipping still. Just the hint of clipping. So I'll just stop there. 98 dB, that's good. That is pretty quiet, and that is uh, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which if this is a subwoofer amplifier, it's it's being also played through a subwoofer that's limited to, you know, a couple hundred hertz at max. So um, this wouldn't be, the, the, the noise level you would get in your car is even quieter than this. As far as testing and keeping a level, a level playing field for everything, we just do the 20 to 20, A-weighted to, uh, basically EQ it the way our ear would hear it. And there's our number. So 98.2, very respectable for class D subwoofer amplifier. And that will take us to our first power measurement, our four ohm power measurement. Now this is gonna be an automated process. I have the audio precision set to look for 1% distortion. Um, keep turning it up and, and find that point and measure the power at that level. Um, so I just hit go and let it go. The amp dyno is being used as the load bank and of course it has numbers on, on its screen as well, but just to keep everything uh, simple and where you guys can see it here and you know, there's a $15,000 piece of equipment. I think that uh, everybody will, will take these numbers as the truth here, even though this is also the truth, these things totally match, but that's how I'm doing this, this show. So here we go. Okay, so I did forget to do something here. I forgot to hook up my meter, my voltmeter, so that I could uh, see what the voltage was during that measurement. That's where the amp dyno wins. The amp dyno does that automatically for you. So that was at 14.69 volts, so that's a bit high. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down for a more realistic number there. So we did 419 at 14.38, so there we go. Let's do two ohms. 766 at 14.29. Uh, let's go ahead and adjust it up a little bit, see if we can get right to 14.4. That's a good number though, but let's be fair to the amplifier. We're all having fun, that's what that's the sport is all about. 7.73 at 14.35. So at 14.4, it's probably close to 7.80. Rating is 700. 10% overage there. And let's go to one ohm. Okay, we're all set up to do the one ohm power testing. But here's what I want to do. If you guys have made it this long into the video, you deserve uh, a little contest. So 
I'm gonna run it at one ohm, continuous sine wave power. This will be equivalent to like an amp dyno certified power. I'm going at 100 hertz. The voltage, I don't know where it's gonna go. I'm, I'm aiming for 14.4, but I will tell you at the end of the run what the voltage was at the end of the run. And then you guys and girls guess the maximum continuous clean power number that it put out. And I'll take the first 50 guesses and the one who gets closest, not over or under, just closest, I will send you this amplifier, this very one right here that's on my bench. Okay, so I'm gonna record it. I'll blur the number out on the editing. We'll have the contest after 50, I'll post the unedited image. Okay, ready? Here we go. There it is. We dropped down to 14.31. So you guess in the comments below what power output it did at one ohm continuous sine wave clean power at 14.31 volts on the input. Closest person in the first 50 guesses, I will send you this amplifier. Thanks for watching.